Um, want me to demonstrate it first or just yeah. have you try it? Yeah. Okay. Let's this is top secret shit, folks, so pay attention. Um, Yates Row. Created by Dorian Yates. Fucked up by me on a regular basis. <laughs> um, the way I like to do them is use a decent amount of lower back. I stop right at my knees. Um, I'll try and show you guys. You know, this does build a lot of size as well. But a lot of bodybuilders, you know, would probably say it's crap and ego. Stop right about here. And I'll use a lot of lower back from about here to there, and then just kind of pull it up. Something like that. Getting a little momentum out of the yeah. bottom but of it. Quite a bit of momentum. Um, okay. And I'll touch it real low down here, and I'm pretty upright when it's touching. I'll usually even lower myself to it yeah. a little bit. But that's just, I um, don't think that actually does anything great for me. I mean, it's just cheating. What Ed Cohn was uh, mentioning about like cheating or getting momentum was that he said what some people kind of look at as cheating uh, really shouldn't be looked at that way necessarily because you're all you're trying to do is get momentum so that you can pull yourself in the right position mm -hmm. so without getting the without getting that little bump out of the bottom you wouldn't be able to do how much weight can you use on this yeah I can go up to can probably do 585 for reps you know, yeah like. I mean without getting that little bump out of the bottom if you tried to use 585 you'd literally probably just be moving it like this if you're trying to do it straight yeah oh, and no. so by getting that little momentum mm -hmm. you're able to then pull your elbows I noticed you had the kind of deep mm -hmm. elbow position which Stan Efferding came and talked to us about when he talked about building up lats as well. So yeah. I think it's important that you get that momentum. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's, you know, extremely important, honestly. It is using lower back. It is using hamstrings and all that kind of shit. We're powerlifting. Yeah. You know what I mean, we want it all to work together. We're not trying to isolate really anything. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Unless maybe we're doing ab work or some shit, but that's for our non-isolated exercises. Right. So um, I prefer to cheat on a lot of stuff. As long as I'm not like, I wouldn't cheat and round my back. Right. I wouldn't get an extra five reps because I'm doing this, you know what I mean? Yeah, right. But like as long as I can keep my back in the right position and the muscles that I'm trying to get stronger are being worked yeah. the way I'm wanting them to be worked, um, I actually find this to be pretty crucial for strength around my knees and lockout and yeah. stuff. Um, it's always been an exercise that I've done. Uh, like I said, there's five, five super big deadlifters I know of that do this exact exercise more right. or less, pretty much the exact same way. And they all use around similar weights too. They're all between 400 for high reps and you know 500 and 600 for low reps. So I mean, if everyone else is doing it, it's gotta be worth something, yeah. right? I highly recommend it. It's my favorite lat exercise. It's, if I had to choose one for deadlifts, it would be this, for sure. Let's see what it looks like when Silent Mike does it. What about a uh, knee bend and then uh, like torso angle? You said you kind of try to finish a little upright? Um, yeah, I'm pretty upright. Um, I usually don't end up more upright than I am at the bottom because I pull myself to the bar a little bit. Okay. You know what I mean? So I always stay kind of the same, same back position, give or take, some cheating. Knees just slightly bent? Yeah, just slightly bent. Yeah, try and stop right at your knees. Yeah, just like that. And make sure that the, the bar never drifts too far out in front of you. You want it maybe a half inch away from your knee at the most. Do you think, uh, if you can catch it from the side, Mike, do a few more reps. You know, sometimes we see some like buckling and real rounding from, from the shoulders here. Mm -hmm. Do you think this exercise kind of helps you get oh, through absolutely. that in the deadlift? Absolutely. This is, this is the best good, thing Mike. for keeping your back from rounding and stuff. It's the best yeah. thing I could ever recommend to anyone. People that <gasps> round their lower back, round their upper back, specifically upper back, you know what I mean? But any kind of back rounding, this is going to work wonders. Right. Because you're, you're constantly keeping yourself in that right position while having a, a pretty big weight constantly try and pull you out of it. Right. I mean, so you're not really going to have a whole lot of problems rounding your back if you're always doing a lot of exercises that demand you maintain proper posture and stuff. How many sets do you do with this? You know, if I'm going very light, I think the most I've ever done for sets and stuff, at four or five for like 10 sets of 10, mm -hmm. oh. you know what I mean? Which again, <laughs> German gets, volume. I, I really like 10 sets of 10, I really do. Yeah. Um, but only on lighter stuff, you know what I mean? Like four or five for this is pretty light for me. Typically though, I'll just do one set. You know what I mean? It's, right. it's quite dangerous. Uh, and and when you say and you do one set, that's uh, you're doing a little bit of a warm up first and then I'll, you're doing I'll a one warm up as, as much as I need to five right. to 10, you know, reps for a plate every set kind of right. thing. And then I'll get up to 405 to 550 and I'll do one kind of all out set. 
And then afterwards, as long as I didn't hurt myself, I'm happy, I move on to something right. else and something safer where I can get a similar result without risking as much. Because, you know, all this kind of stuff really is like, if you're not doing it properly, if it's enough weight, it's, it's hard enough, it's enough reps, that if you don't maintain proper form, if you let right. yourself get really fatigued and then like let your form break down on your third set, like it's as dangerous as deadlifting, if not significantly more so. You know what I mean? Yeah. In my opinion. So I'll usually just do one set on the really dangerous shit and then just uh, push it every week. Kind of like DC style training. Yeah. Um, You've accumulated a lot of strength. Do you think it might be uh, maybe a little bit more important for somebody who's newer to uh, focus in on maybe doing a couple more sets rather than just like one set? Or do you think it's uh, decent for each person just to try to go at, get after it the way you're doing it? One kind of all out set. You know, if I have people do one set, I have them doing a lot of something else. Okay. You know what I mean? So I, uh, I definitely train with less volume than I'd have a beginner use, simply because for me, if I tried to match them, like I'm working yeah. so much harder to right. be, you know what I mean? It's just, it's not even remotely the same. So, I mean, I'll have, uh, if you deadlift like 315, I might say, you know, take 135 and start at three sets to failure. You right. know what I mean? Kind of thing. If you deadlift 600 pounds or 700 pounds or 800 pounds, I just say, you know, try and get up to 500 for reps on one set. Just try and add an extra rep every week. Gotcha. And then go do all your safe stuff. You know what I mean? Your cables and your whatever. Light shit. All right. Well, there's some uh, rows, and he's going to take us through a few more assistance exercises. <laughs> um, we're going to do a Romanian deadlift. Uh, you know, there's probably like 40 different ways to do Romanian deadlifts. Yeah. Like, interchangeable with stiff leg and all that crap. I'm gonna show you guys the way I like to do them. Specifically, you know, it is a great exercise for building muscle and stuff. Like, yeah. Great for hamstrings and glutes and whatnot. But I mean, I'm doing this for strength, so it's a little bit different. Uh, I basically, I take the same grip that I would take when deadlifting, same stance I would take when deadlifting. It's about like this for me. I do high reps on these. What I'll do is, I'll, just like I'm deadlifting, I'll bend my knees and everything, I'll take the bar to about mid shin and a little bit past my knees, just like that. And I'll just keep it moving, just like this. And I'll do about 20 reps. Kind of looks like what West Side Barbell refers to as a dimmel deadlift. <laughs> yeah, very much so. Um, slightly, slightly different, because I'm, I'm thinking they're doing it for a little bit more quads and stuff. Yeah. I think they start a little bit higher and end a little bit higher, and you're just going yeah. mid-range. Um, I just do these specifically for strength from here to here. It's incredible. I mean, it's like, you wouldn't believe it if you did them for a little while. You can actually get, Probably stronger on these than deadlifts, mm. at least in this you know high rep ranges yeah. because you don't want to try your max on these. Most kind of these thing, movements that you're doing, you're using straps for, right? Yeah, of course. Okay. I could never. Um, yeah, who cares? Never... I mean, you're, you're doing it for yeah. uh, specific. You're targeting targeting specific muscles. You're not really worried about your grip at that point. Yeah, not at all. Um, you know, nowadays with hook grip and deadlift bars and stuff, yeah. it's just not necessary to you know do barehanded stuff all the time. Right. And obviously, you know. It takes a lot longer to get your deadlifting muscle strong than your grip. You know, you can get your grip up to par in six months. It might take six years to get your deadlift where you want it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I'll do these. You know, I, I probably do them at least every other week. And I'll do usually about 20 reps, maybe 30. Uh, probably as low as 15 sometimes. Yeah. And I'll probably go, if it's really light, if it's like, again, the beginning of like a peaking program or something, I might just come in and do like 405 for 20. Super easy. Row 315 for 20. Like 200 pounds off of you know, what I could probably do kind of thing. Right. And then I'll add 50 pounds of workout and pretty soon it's 550 and it's 20 and it's very hard. It's 585, it's you right. know, 20, it's very hard. And uh, you know, I might get up to like 635 or something and I'll usually drop them around there. Um, it's not something I like to use a lot of weight on, although you end up using a lot of weight anyway, just yeah. even when you do high reps. But uh, it's a great exercise and it, very strongly mimics your deadlift. I do them exactly how I deadlift to the best of my ability, um, other than, of course, the very top part. I don't, um, I don't like to lock out because uh, I feel like it becomes more upper back and stuff right. than what I'm trying to do. Taking some of the tension off. When you, yeah. you, you, you go all the way up, you relax. And, and then people tend to, when they, when they get up to here, they tend to keep it on their back throughout the movement afterwards. You know, I'm, I'm really just looking to keep it on my hamstrings and stuff. I don't want to get up here, have my lats involved, and then from there on out, it's like an upper back movement right. as well. You know what I mean? I, I don't give a shit about my upper back with these. I don't care if it's, you know, doing a lot of work or not. It's purely for here to here. And as far as um, training that area, I've never found anything better. You know, if you combine Yates rows, that it's going to strengthen from here to here. With Romanians, it's going to strengthen from here to here. With deadlift stance box squats, which are going to strengthen from here to here. You got a pretty good combination of shit, making it so you can lock out some really heavy weights. Throw in some barbell shrugs at the top, get up to, 
let's say you want to deadlift 800 pounds, you're at 750, you get up to 800 for 20 on shrugs, might take you two or three months, you yeah. know what I mean? It's a lot easier than people think, you know, you could shrug 400 pounds over your deadlift max if you train for it, for probably a set of 10, if you wanted, right. if you really wanted. You get up to 1,000 pounds for 20 if you tried. Yeah, you, you know work I mean? on it for a little while. Yeah, so by the time it's all said and done, every little position there is just worked so thoroughly, worked so effectively, and you're stronger in every single spot. There's yeah. no, when you deadlift, you know, you get a lot of momentum off the floor and stuff, it carries through those weak areas and shit, you don't get the same, um, the same targeted response that you're really you. shooting for. Yeah. Like you could with like floor presses for bench or like board presses or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, well also too, the movements that you showed us so far, the Yates row and this one, um, it seems like they would, and you even touched upon it a little bit, they're gonna help you maintain a better position throughout the movement, mm -hmm. but they also look like they're gonna help you get into a better position in the first place. Yeah. This one's kind of stretching your hamstrings out a little bit and uh, helping you, teaching you to sit back like you were teaching us earlier. Yeah. And then also the other one is uh, just really activating the lats and keeping, the, keeping everything in close and tight the way you were showing us to set up on the deadlift. Yep, very much so. The, the assistance work is um, largely responsible for a good form, you know, good yeah. technique and stuff. If you have a lagging muscle group, because you, you never do rows and stuff, you know, of course your upper back is probably going to round. Yeah. You know, it's probably rounded all the time. You probably <laughs> walk around like this. Why would it be any different when you deadlift, you know what I mean? Right. So as, as long as you target each little area, keep PRs at each little area, constantly push, you can get away with doing one set per right. exercise. You know what I mean? Because you're doing so much different stuff that it all, it's, it's almost like you're doing you five different exercises with one set apiece. Is that, you know, any different than doing one exercise with five sets? Not right. really, it's, it's probably more effective than that because you hit all those different angles and all those different things instead. So I'm, I'm a pretty big believer in more exercises versus just stick with one and do more sets kind right. of thing. All right, we're going to move on to another assistance exercise. That was the Romanian deadlift with George Lehman. Show us what's up, big guy. All right, this is a deadlift stance box squat. Um, obviously, another thing, you know, I kind of got from someone else and put my own tweaks on it and stuff over the years. Uh, I like to squat with my deadlift stance specifically for strength off the floor. I like to do it to a box because I believe it, you know, better mimics your deadlifting training, more or less. Um, as you guys will see, He's gonna use the same stance he deadlifts in. Um, for conventional, it's something like that. Um, we're gonna use a box simply because you can keep your shins a little bit more upright, similar to how you would when deadlifting. You also pause at the bottom, similar to how you would when deadlifting. And um, it really allows you to sit back into it and kind of like really, um, the more you sit back, obviously, the, the more forward you have to lean to come back up, which again, very much like a deadlift. Uh, it's gonna allow you to get in a position that's gonna represent your deadlift, yeah. and if you, if you were to do a regular squat, you wouldn't really be able to get into this position yeah. without it being awkward at some point. Yeah, super, super awkward. Um, sometimes people don't have a box and I'm like, just make one. And yeah. It's not the same shit. <laughs> All right. um, probably both would be helpful, but this is the best, so we'll stick with this. Um, I've been doing this for like eight years or something like that. I think I started when I was 15. I had been hurt squatting, um, wide stance squatting. My inner thigh got screwed up uh, from going from box squats to regular squats without the in-between. And I had to um, do close stance box squats for a while to work through an inner thigh injury. And I also couldn't deadlift. So I ended up doing about six weeks of close stance box squatting. And when I came back, I deadlifted my first 600 pounds. So my best before that was 550. So I realized pretty fast, I was like, there's something to this shit. You know what right. I mean? Like, this is, um, this is something to stick with. Um, and everyone I've worked with so far has done them, assuming that they were able to without pain. And everyone's really liked them. Uh, you just have to stick with them for long enough to get progress on them. You know right. what I mean? Trying for one workout, you won't necessarily see a result like any exercise. Doing it for eight weeks in a row, adding 20 pounds a week, starting with a set of 15, you're probably going to be a lot stronger. It's probably going to be a lot of carryover. So let's kind of show this. Your, your hips on this uh, movement um, are going to be a little bit lower mm -hmm. than a deadlift. Yes. Uh, but that's fine because you want to start with, from a lower position to kind mm -hmm. of break through some of the sticking points, correct? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Um, if you want to have your hips low, do box squats with your hips lower than that, you know? Bring your, uh, yeah, there you go. Now just try and sit back and keep your shins pretty upright. They'll come forwards a little bit. Pause, come back up. Fantastic. I might even have you do slightly lo more low bar than that and kind of stay bent over at the top. If possible, just kind of stay in a good morning position even at the top of the lift. Never really come out of it. There you go. You kind of look at the challenge that this, prov this provides the lower back here. Mm -hmm. As he gets to the bottom, his back has to kind of uh, sag a little bit. And, and then in order to get back out of there, he's got to reverse that by kind of straightening himself out. 
And as you guys can see from the side there, this is almost exactly the same as a conventional deadlift at the bottom. The only thing you're really missing here is the lockout portion and the lat involvement. But in terms of legs and lower back, like there probably isn't a better exercise for leg drive and stuff, in my opinion. Um, it will work wonders for people. If you deadlift with your hips high, do a lot of these. Put 150 pounds on whatever you can do with this. Expect your deadlift to be up considerably. Assuming, you know, you're injury free, training everything else right and all that kind of shit. It's pretty incredible. People would be surprised. You know Similar I mean? set and rep scheme to what you're normally um, yeah, talking about. Yeah, I typically, about. harder exercises, something like this. Because you're going to do Romanians, because you're going to do rows, because you're going to do shrugs, you're going to do deadlifts, you're going to do all this shit. One set. Yeah. It's all, all that's needed. Um, I have done more sets in the past. I have had people do more sets in the past. I don't really care. If you do one set of 15, good enough, as long as you're stronger next week. If you're not getting stronger next week, I guess we'd have to do more volume right. or some shit. But, uh, you know, it's anytime you, you get to a new exercise, it's going to go up regardless. You find a way I mean, to challenge yourself. Would you say maybe like uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, you're just simply trying to challenge yourself maybe like a notch? Uh, more each week Absolutely. so maybe week one just because you haven't done some of these movements before maybe you're only at like a five or six like you're kind of mm -hmm. pussyfooting around a little that's, bit that's actually a very very good point um, anytime I do any kind of peaking programs I start people off very light and very easy um, I, I tell people to start off people think I always train with 20 reps and shit you know some things I stick with high reps all the time back rows whatever Typically, I have people start with high reps just so they can go lighter, just so they're not going super heavy and super hard because they don't even know what weight to use. And they're always, they never quite go to absolute failure yeah. at 15. You know, right. they're always held back a little bit. And that's my main reason for doing so, aside from Yeah, week also, one, use 185 and bust out 20 reps. Exactly. And you someone's know, like, oh, that's not that hard. And you say, okay, well, next week we're using 225. And, 20 and that's, that's enough. Even if they didn't kill themselves doing it, even right. if they could have got another five, that added stimulus that they're not used to is plenty to be 20 pounds stronger next week for the same rep range. And, you know, you keep pushing a little bit harder and a little bit harder. Eventually, you're 100 something pounds stronger on a lift that you haven't been doing. All of a sudden, your deadlift is significantly different because where you were 100 pounds weaker, now you're 100 pounds stronger and your form's drastically different because of it. And you can be more upright, you can be stronger off the floor. You know, you get in that good starting position, everything's better. You know, it's not just stronger off the floor, everything's good. You know, you, you suddenly you lock out better, you get it past your knees easier, you know, it's faster, everything works out really well. Now here's something really complicated. Mike does sumo deadlifting, mm. which is cheating, let's be <laughs> honest. Right. So what would, it, what would it look like if he was gonna try to have this mimic a sumo deadlift? You know, people that do like, uh, like super wide sumo, like toes almost touching the plate, mm -hmm. I don't typically recommend they actually do box squats that wide, quite that wide. I'd have them bring their feet in the tiniest Might bit. Might tweak the hips a little too much yeah. or groin. But um, basically the exact same principle. Um, it might even work better for uh, sumo, honestly, uh, because, you know, uh, more or less wide stance box squats are the shit. They really are. For building muscle, glutes, hamstrings and stuff, there may not be anything better. Yeah. You know what I mean? That I know of. I, I used to do tons of them. Like tons and tons and tons of them. The only thing I don't like about them is, you know, they're not a regular squat. You know, you can't right. replace your regular squat and do well with regular squatting. Yeah, you can't take your box squat to mm -hmm. the meet and be like, here it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it'd be nice, right? Right. And I, I find it, to, uh, for me, it's, it's caused a lot of injuries thinking that was the case. Because I'm sure you remember, you know, whatever it was, five to ten years ago, it was all equipped lifting and it was all yeah. regular squats. Yeah, wide stance cross. super illegally you know fucking out here <laughs> sit, you know shins going backwards and shit like you could never ever do that and as soon as you take the box away and you know want to see your your newfound strength it's just not there you know what I mean? yeah your knee comes forward mm -hmm. and you don't have the same back positioning you're, and you're sticking your ass back out for nothing there's nothing right. to sit back onto and all of a sudden you know where you would no normally feel pretty strong at the bottom when you touch the box you just keep going down right you know so I mean? the main thing here though is if he's going to do a sumo if he's trying to have this relate to his sumo, he would just go a little wider yeah, just, than normal. Just try and mimic the stance a little bit better. Um, and it will have the exact same, you know, carryover as for conventional. Just have you do a set. Put silent mic through the ringer here. Yep, yep. That would be perfect. Very much so the, the bottom of a sumo deadlift, you know. It takes the lats and stuff out of it. You know, you don't get the same lockout power and stuff. But for strength off the floor, it's just incredible. And uh, that's what's going to keep people, like you notice, you pull with your hip side a lot of extension versus yeah. driving downwards and staying more upright and shit. That will change that you know, to a huge degree. 
Um, do you normally do wide stance box squats or anything like that? I have in the past a ton, yeah. Okay. What's your strength like that? Used to be good. Used As to compared be, to your regular squat, I mean, your deadlift and stuff. Used to be uh, about similar as my regular squat, which is a little bit below my deadlift. What do you squat roughly? Uh, 575. And deadlift roughly? 630, 650. Okay. Yeah, it's, that sounds about right. Um, I think that's more or less uh, probably what you're missing. If, if you could keep working on this kind of thing, you'd yeah. probably be a little bit stronger with your hips a little bit lower. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know, wide stance box squats and stuff, I find them significantly easier than a regular squat. Yeah. I know, I know it's not necessarily supposed to be the case. I've been told it shouldn't be. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I've, yeah, been, I've done like 770 or some shit like that, and I was like 18. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so you probably want to get it like closer to your deadlift. As close as you can get it to your deadlift, yeah. the stronger you're going to be with your hips low, and then the whole thing is just going to be feeling great and incredible. Yeah. Also, back to like positioning and, and mobility yeah. and stuff, this is actually squishing you down in position. Yep. You know, where the deadlift, we have to figure out a way to organize our body from the top. How do I pull myself in a position? You had a bunch of weird ways of like pushing the hips back, mm -hmm. sitting way back, using the bar, tucking your lats in and doing all these things. You could just simply put the bar on your back and, and have it push you down into those positions, right? Yep, uh, get yourself down there, find that tight spot where you, you get all that power from and stuff. And uh, yeah, exactly what you're talking about. Um, fantastic exercise, uh, I highly recommend them. I don't have people do a lot of wide stance box squatting because they do so much other shit. Yeah. I mean, you just, if I could fit in everything I'd like, they'd always be in there, right. always. Um, great, great exercise for people with bad knees and shit, right? Um, yeah, very important. Highly recommend them. Whether it's sumo, conventional, do them. High reps, go. get stronger at them. Just going to call them the Lehman squat. Make it easier on everybody. And then plus, because you guys don't think that he does any squats. <laughs> anyway, that's it with George Lehman. we got a few more exercises to go through. He's going to show us some stuff for the abs. All right, George Lehman is going to walk us through about uh, three ab exercises, four ab exercises. Uh, the first one is just a hanging leg raise. Yep. Go ahead and grab hold of it. Um, I don't really do anything real special. Just pull your knees up more or less. I try, I try and keep my lower back a little bit arched, but that's about it. My legs somewhat bent. I don't worry about keeping them too straight. Um, I find this kind of targets lower abs pretty good. Um, I try and just work from top to bottom kind of thing, everything. Obliques, upper abs, lower abs. Should you be shaking like that and shimmy? <sighs> <laughs> oh, it's probably it's probably because you don't do those typically, right? Yeah, yeah. You it's been a should. while. Yeah. I used to. It's it's worth doing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've done a ton of ab work, and um, this is one of the best ones. You know what I mean? So uh, worth doing. Uh, aside from this, I like a weighted crunch. All right, man. Go ahead and lay down on here. Try not to fart. Go ahead and grab the bar, unrack it. Oh, I saw this. This is the three hundred workout. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nah. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> be a Spartan afterwards. I hope so. Um, now just try and touch the ceiling with the bar to the best of your ability. Just try and get up there. Crunch. Crunch? Oh, yeah, take your uh, shoulder blades off the pad. You're, crunch you're crunching up. Kinda. Yeah, there you go. I'll usually go somewhere around 225. Do as Whoa. many reps as I can. Really great ab exercise. It's very comfortable to use weight. Um, really great for upper abs. Let's see what happens to him now. I might get crushed. Hope it lands right on the schnoz. It's all right, it's just synthol. It's synthol on the schnoz. Yeah, there you go. I'd probably have you start with like 95 or something just because. 10 Ooh. reps, 20 reps? Five reps, as many reps as you can. Okay. Add some of those for a things. Few. Yeah, 30, Move 40, 50, who cares, right? Stimulate the muscle. Next exercise side bends. Uh, Done these for years as well. Used to go up to 150s, you know, try and get 20 kind of thing. It will make your waist thicker. Your waist can only really get as thick as your hips. You know what I mean? So right. not a big deal unless you really care. But uh, we're yeah, powerless, right? Yeah, I'm not going right? to look good in a speedo. Go ahead and grab that. God damn. Hey, hey. I do a pretty small range of motion. You know what I mean? Just up and down, like four inches. Up, kind down. Of Which side? That side. Four up. inches is small? Just like that. I'm confused. Yeah, he said like that. four Perfect. inches is small. Not a big believer in like trying to like touch your ankles or anything, yeah. you know what I mean? You and and to... if you were to spot them, would you spot them like this? <laughs> I'm a little teapot, <laughs> short and stout. The, the new dance Here right is there. my hand though, here is my, my spout. 
Yeah, that's that's gonna be really useful and shit for just in general. People misload the bar and stuff. Right. You know what I mean? It's gonna keep you from crippling yourself more or less. Um, I, I also find it to be very useful in general because you you know you push your obliques out against the belt too. Right. So it's important to train the whole thing. Why not? Right. We're trying to be as strong oh. as we can. Do an exercise for everything. It's always worked really well for me with deadlifts. You know, it's the same principles applies to do an exercise for each different muscle group, each right. different area of the lift. Sooner or later, everything's really, really. You big develop uh, better control of mm -hmm. those muscles, right? Yes, yes. Uh, what else we got? Um, we got the push well, out. Go thing. ahead and use this thing for that. Actually, let's go over to this bench here. I'm gonna set this on your stomach. It's gonna be pretty heavy. Notice I'm making Mike do this. Ow! <laughs> let it, <laughs> Just let, farting everywhere. Let it sink in and then push it out. Flex what if it I out. shit on the bench? It happens, man. It's my bench. You, this has made you shit before? Oh, uh, unfortunately not. It would be a good story, right? <laughs> I'll do that for, it's very hard to breathe. That's mostly the limiting factor. Yeah. You come Get the Kegel muscles in there. Right? Close to death. <laughs> yeah. But you know, 20 to 30 or something like that, 50 to 150 pounds. I might use 100. Nobody around here, you know, don't use 150. It's not needed. Right. But this you could. feels very weird. And uh, you're kind of holding it at the top a little bit for, just for a couple a second. seconds. Yeah, just, uh, you know, maybe a two count over and over again. This is going to be for you YouTube people. If your lower back is a two by four, your abs are the two by four underneath. I like to explain it. Um, you watch on TV, you'll see like a feat of strength. He'll be like an old guy who's going to have his stomach run over by a truck or something. And he's, With the, you know, he's well, not you know break about man squishing? Yeah, man squashing. <laughs> He's not going to break his ribs because he's going to flex his abs out. This is what we're doing with the belt. We're flexing our abs against something, and this is what it's training. If you do a lot of these, you're going to have a lot of ability to push your abs out against your inner thigh or against your thighs in general yeah. when squatting, when deadlifting, and it's going to give you an incredibly strong core. Let's um, see what it looks like when you do it. If you did one you workout, you got a powerful belly. Oh yeah, that if hurt my did, face. If you did one workout like this for a few sets, you would actually notice a difference within a day or so. I've never seen this before. You know, it's one of those things where it looks weird, but it also looks like it would be a good tool to teach you how to use your stomach. No, it felt a lot like I'm trying to push into my belt. Yeah. It felt the same. Yeah, it makes sense after you do it. It just looks crazy when you don't know what's going on. Yeah, a lot of people are like, yeah. you're not serious, right? Like you're yeah, no, but me. I felt it when I no, breathed. If, if you were to do probably two sets of that tomorrow, yeah. if you were to flex out and just feel it, it would be significantly stronger. And whether it gets stronger or not, I think you could take a beginner and teach them how to brace that way. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's a really good way yeah. of teaching people how to activate and yeah. use their core and stuff because a lot of people just really have no clue. Yeah. Tell them to you know, make their core tight, they suck it in. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then they go like this yeah. and they kind of crunch down like they're doing a, a crunch or something. Not at all. If anything, you, you know, do a reverse crunch and push out and, and you know, make it bigger right. and, and flex it. Never downwards and yeah. inwards and that kind of shit. <laughs> right. That'd be the worst thing you could possibly do. Right. Um, so that is that probably... like me squatting, actually. Yeah. <laughs> like a demonstration. <laughs> that is, that's actually probably the best ab exercise I've ever done. Um, if I had to choose one, like, like I said, for back, it would be eight rows. Right. For abs, it would be this. Um, probably in order of importance, that, then side bends, then leg raises, then weighted crunches. Weighted crunches are just like, you throw that shit in on the end, finish right. everything up a little bit. It's, it's easy, you know, you get to lay down and unrack a bar and screw around and then rack it really easily. Right. Not, a, not a hard thing to do. Um, I used to do 30, 40, even like 50 sets of abs and shit. I would just sit around and just do ab yeah. work, ab work, ab work. Because it's, you know, you can do a thousand sit-ups and shit. It's not a big deal. Right. You can do tons of it. It's, it doesn't... Um, it's not going to be like taxing to your body. Yeah, it's really. not taxing. It's very easy to recover from. You build up um, work capacity very fast on it. But again, you could get away with one set per exercise if you don't already do them, or even if you already do abs. As long as you're doing it, I find abs are mostly just about doing it. You get in a little extra stimulus, a little extra yeah. that you hadn't been doing, and you're a little bit better than you were. The more you do, probably the better, right? Yeah. But I would say like this kind of falls back into the thing of uh, you know, listening to uh, one of your motivational speeches where you kind of said, you know, hey, like you're going to email me a question. It's only going to be one sentence. Hey, dude, how do I get my deadlift better? <laughs> you're like, why would I help you yeah. when you're not putting that much effort into even emailing me? This is kind of a similar thing. Like you want your deadlift to get better. You're saying you want your deadlift to get better, but you're not taking care of all the, uh, all the, some, all the details mm -hmm. of making your deadlift better. Why aren't you doing your ab work? They should be doing this kind of stuff, right? Yeah, people already know that abs help your deadlifts. 
they're interested in getting their deadlift up, but they don't do abs. You know what I mean? Do what you can do. If you know you should be doing something, do it. You know what I mean? Go ahead and throw some stuff in. You don't have to start off with the most hardcore shit in the world. Start off with like a set, one set of abs, like one exercise, and just go from there. It's more than you were doing if it, you were doing nothing at all. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? And uh, just kind of progress in weight and volume and frequency. Uh, I got up to doing abs every time I trained. I got up to, um, you know, figuring out how to go heavier on ab work, you know, go up to the heavy dumbbells on side bins, start doing, you know, weighted crunches like that, that kind of shit. It is important to, to use weight. I'm not one of those people that's like, you know, 200 sit-ups. I mean, no. Right. Uh, but somewhere between, you know, 20 and 40 for abs, I, I really like a lot. Any, any less than that, it starts to... Um, you start working more like your hip flexors and shit when you're doing leg raises or sit-ups. Right. You know, you start working like your lower back and like other, like you start doing weird shit with side bends where it's just, it seems dangerous, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Going sideways with 150 pounds and stuff, it's just, uh, it's not what you want to be doing. But just a little bit of like activation with these exercises and I think people will notice like a significant difference in their ability to, to use their abs to help them off the floor, to not hurt their lower back and shit like that. We all hate doing assistance work. Uh, what motivates you and drives you to get it all done? Um, it's just so much easier than all the other shit. You know I mean, the assistance work is the easiest shit. I get like intimidated by deadlifts, man. Like <laughs> I'm a week out from deadlifts and I'm like, whew, thank God it's a week out because holy shit, like that's going to be terrible when I go for it. There's always that chance of not doing well or, you know, getting hurt or not feeling good for it. Yeah, or, there's some anxiety attached to it. With a yeah. side bend, there's no anxiety. Yeah, you're there's, not thinking, there's I go zero. do that 120 pound yeah, dumbbell for eight reps you're today. You're never, once you get done with the heavy stuff, you're like, thank God, it's only leg curls and, you know, ab work and calf raises. It's, it's the easiest shit to do. Yeah. And, you know, if you have the free time to get in and do it, it's, it's fun. You know, you get to stick around the gym right. for longer. It, you feel better. You, you, you look better from doing all the extra work and stuff like that. And mentally, it's just kind of like you're working more towards your goals. You're just doing right. a little bit more. You know I mean, I've, uh, like, I, like, I used to like playing video games and stuff, and you, know, you work on your character, and you do all these little things, right. and you build up your rank and stuff. To me, it's kind of like that. You yeah. know what I mean, it's kind of like you just train and train and train and do a little bit more, a little bit more, and eventually so the more that you, off. So for you, the more that you do, the more accomplished you feel? Yes, more or less. I, I feel great yeah. when I do a lot of work. Yeah. You know what I mean, I, I feel really good about it. I, I feel like I can relax when I do enough. When I don't do enough, you know, I don't feel good about the week. You know what I mean? I, it's, it's just not where I want to be at. I want to feel super successful about what I did, know I did my best, even if it's just, you know, I did a lot of leg curls. You know, I did a lot of rear delt flies, did a lot of ab work. I did 10 sets of calves. It's still more than I was going to do, and it, it makes me feel pretty good to know I'm pushing that little extra step that's not mentally going to screw me over because I don't want to do 10 sets of squats. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to dread that shit, and I might not even come to the gym if someone's going to tell me I have to do deadlifts for four sets and then we're going to do rack pulls and then we're going to do squats for four sets and then all this other shit i'd much rather just you know lighter easier assistance work stick around for longer take my time talk to people you know fuck around it's it's not hard you know what i mean that's right. my motivation it's easy right all right well there's uh some ab exercises on how to deadlift from george lehman he showed us how to deadlift he showed us all the other assistance exercises for deadlifting it's really important it's crucial to do it He's the one doing it. He's breaking world records. He's smashing huge deadlifts. So make sure you get that shit done. You can check out his YouTube video. It is uh, GEO Lehman. Um, you can look for me in George Lehman, musclemascus.com. Check it out. More or less, you guys are going to see all the same shit you heard here. A little bit more detail, a little bit more videos coming out with new shit every day. Probably going to put out some more stuff in the next few days. Hopefully, you guys will like it. All right. And we also have Silent Mike here. He's got a vlog. Make sure you're following that at youtube.com backslash silent mike i think and that is it just search silent mike <laughs> search george lehman you'll fucking find us <laughs> strength is never a weakness and that is it from super training gym